Standing in for Carlyde with the headlines, the Geneva disarmament talks are hopelessly deadlocked. America turns down a new Russian proposal on Berlin. Fighting increasing in Vietnam, Adolf Eichmann pleads again for his life. Two dead and seven injured in district automobile accidents. The Blue Cross says it will lose $6 million this year. In sports, Duquesne is an underdog in their NIT battle with St. John's tonight. All the news and sports in just a moment. It's 7 o'clock, and here is Four Star News with Dave Murray and Ed Conway, presented by Duquesne Light, who suggests that you consider electric home heating when you build or buy that new house. The diplomats at Geneva say this evening that the disarmament talks have reached a stalemate there. The U.S., Britain, and Russia are expected to tell the rest of the nations present at the conference that they cannot break the deadlock on disarmament. And our government dismissed today the latest Russian proposal on Berlin as a minor variation of the same old Soviet plan to drive the Western Allies out of the city. The Russians wanted to take over control of the Berlin Air Corridors with a board of international advisors. The Army reports that Communist East German police have opened fire on American Army sedans in East Germany during the past few days, but no one was hurt. There's been an increase in the fighting in Vietnam. The Defense Department says Communist guerrilla combat groups in South Vietnam have engaged in battles involving hundreds of men, and that the Reds are increasing their forces. Israel is also tense this evening in the wake of run-ins between Israeli and the Syrian border patrols. Villagers in Injeb, an Israeli fishing settlement on the shores of the biblical Sea of Galilee, are cleaning up the wreckage left by a Syrian artillery attack which came after Israeli forces crossed into Syria on a so-called punitive raid. Tonight, the world watches this area only 20 miles wide. That's all that separates the two enemies, each charging the other with aggression. In another part of Israel today, Adolf Eichmann, began a new plea for his life in the same courtroom in which he was sentenced to death. His attorney said the court had no right to try Eichmann, and also that Eichmann was only a cog in the vast machinery, not a principle, that put to death six million European Jews during World War II. Cuban Premier Fidel Castro has formally canceled his old offer to trade 1,200 war prisoners for American tractors, Castro said he didn't like the way the offer was handled by this country. In troubled Argentina, President Frondizi is finding it difficult to form a coalition government whose anti perón makeup would satisfy army demands for a new deal to end the week-long political crisis there. Meanwhile, die-hard backers of the former dictator Perón today called a one-day nationwide general strike to protest the government's action in nullifying their election gains but many workers are reported not going along with the strike. In this country, a group of top-level scientists has called for urgent action to safeguard Americans from radioactive, chemical, and other pollutants affecting air, food, and water. Surgeon General Luther Terry made the recommendations after looking into the nation's health problems. Anthropologist L.S. Leakey of England may have uncovered a missing link in the evolution of man. He found the fossil remains of a subhuman, which are 14 million years old. Leakey found two pieces of the upper palate and the lower tooth in Kenya, Africa. And he says he believes Central Africa must have been the location of the Garden of Eden, the birthplace of earliest man. Nine coal miners were killed and 14 others injured in an underground explosion in a mine near Burnley, England today. Most of the 200 men who had just gone to work managed to escape. Here at home, both the Allegheny and Monongahela rivers rose quickly today. Cars parked on the Mon Wharf had to be moved or towed away. River forecaster Vernon Houghton says both rivers will crest at 20 feet early tomorrow morning and then begin to fall. We'll see about some local news in a moment. Right now, Gene Connolly visits an electrically heated house with Duquesne Light. This is the lovely total electric home of Mr. and Mrs. J.F. Retzer near Mount Nebo Road. Although it's a cold winter night outside, the Retzers are comfortable in the living room of their electrically heated home. The clean, quiet, uniform electric heat is thoroughly enjoyed both by the Retzers and by Smokey, their cat. 
Mrs. Retzer shows how the temperature is controlled in each room by an individual thermostat, with the heat distributed uniformly from electric cables located in the ceiling. Of course, there's also a complete electric kitchen with a beautiful modern electric range. And full house power enables them to enjoy all of the appliances that they own now or will own in the future. And the average price of electricity for all of this is less than $32 a month, which pays for all their cooking, clothes drying, water heating, home heating, and lighting. For full information on clean electric heating, call Duquesne Light, Grant 1-4300. A fatal accident near New Stanton in Westmoreland County has taken the life of 42-year-old Robert Tannehill. His car hit an embankment on the New Stanton Mount Pleasant Road and rolled over three times. State police say Tannehill was thrown clear of the vehicle but suffered a fractured skull. He was pronounced dead on arrival at Frick Memorial Hospital in Mount Pleasant. He was alone in the car at the time. The scene of the accident was about two miles south of New Stanton. Three children were shaken up today when the station wagon in which they were sitting in the Noblestown Shopping Center drifted onto Noblestown Road and was struck by a passing car. Taken to Ohio Valley Hospital for treatment of cuts and bruises, five-year-old Kenneth Wiley and his sisters, three-year-old Kimberly and nine-month-old Tammy Sue, all of Crafton. Their mother, Mrs. Caroline Sue Wiley, was shopping at the time, the driver of the car not injured. Two girls and a truck driver injured in an auto cattle truck collision on the Ohio River Boulevard at Sewickley. The car in which the girls were riding reportedly came out of a side street, striking the tractor trailer on the right front side. A truck loaded with 28 cows overturned, killing at least 10 of the beasts, crippling many others. The injured have been identified as 35-year-old Virginia Musey of Pine Street in Ambridge, the driver of the car. Her condition is reported good. A passenger in the car, 38-year-old Doris DeVries of Neely Street in Fair Oaks, is in fair condition, as is the truck driver, Jack Boyd of Centerburg, Ohio. Traffic had to be detoured all around the crash area. A five-year-old boy struck and killed today near his home on the north side, Billy Snyder of Dixon Street, was struck by a car driven by a McKees Rocks woman She's been identified as Mary Lewicki, the boy dead on arrival at St. John's Hospital. And dragging operations continue today on the rain-swollen Loyal Hannah River near Ligonier, where the body of the driver of a sports car that was found yesterday overturned near the shore. Firemen and skin divers are cooperating in the operation, which had to be suspended yesterday because of high waters. The car registered to Jay Jamison, the second president of the South Union Coal Company. <laughs> 